Hello, my name is John Rose. And in this video, I'd like to show you guys how to gain weight on a raw vegan diet. Now, first of all, there's two things you gotta understand about gaining weight and even losing weight. Number one, there are seven major components of weight. Number two, when many people adopt a raw vegan diet, if they're on the slender side to begin with, for many of you guys, you, build, you break down tissue faster than you build it up. Remember, we can't step in the same river twice like we can't step in the same body twice. We're always building a brand new body. And when you start eating the right food, the body starts getting rid of the old and putting in the new. And again, in this process, cannibalism can be faster than the anabolism stage of metabolism. We're simply breaking down tissue at a faster rate than we can build it up. However, I have not found that to be true when people take a solid food vacation on juices. In fact, when I coach people who are underweight, they will lose a little in the beginning, but then they'll start gaining weight on nothing but juices. And that's mainly because we're not wasting all of our energy digesting food. So we can use that energy to help rebuild the body at the same rate it's being broken down. That's why I like the solid food vacation so much. You see results so much faster and you don't go through that horrible weight loss that so many people do. And it's interesting. You read this over and over. It's very common. You'll read about some guy, 160 pounds, 6'2". Each raw food goes down to 120. Oh my God. And not changing one thing, eating the same food, it goes back up to 160. But it's a different 160 because there are seven components of weight. So the first thing we really need to do is to understand those seven components of weight and understand that most of us are a combination of over and under weight. Most of us are dehydrated. So when we look at that piece of the puzzle alone, it's huge. Seven components. Water is number one, about two-thirds of our body is water weight. Close to 70% of our body should be water weight. Other remaining one third, about half of that dry weight is protein. Then we have two forms of energy, carbohydrates and fats, two forms of waste matter, relatively current waste matter, and that old accumulated more matter. Both of those are serpents in our body. Remember, most of us have about 12, 15 mils backed up in our intestines, and then there's a lot of old stuff stashed away in all sorts of places. So when you take a solid food vacation, you get rid of the weight you need to get rid of. Now some of you who are already on the thin side might be surprised. You might not think your bathrooms are dirty, but both of them probably are if you're sick. Two bathrooms. One's for the digestive system, that's the colon. 12, 15 mils backed up in there. But then we have our lymph system, the fluids around our body. And I know from experience working with a lot of people, that you can be real thin and still have dirty bathrooms. You can be real thin and still 30 days later have stuff coming out of you that you know didn't come from that juice. It's old stuff. We need to change our whole composition. We gotta bump the water percentage up. First thing you should do if you're trying to gain weight, get a scale, measure your water percentage. If it's 50%, you gotta go, oh my God, it's supposed to be 70. What's 20% of your weight? or add it back in and figure it out. Whatever you gotta do, you still get an idea of what I'm talking about. 100 pounds, 20%, 20 pounds. You wanna gain weight? Don't drink water. Eat fruits and vegetables. It's not the same kind of water. That's why, again, I like the, the, the solid food vacation on juices. You can't eat as much water as you can drink when you take away the fiber on a temporary basis so you can flush out the serpent, clean the bathrooms out. And what you're gonna find with a lot of people who are having trouble eating or gaining weight with raw food, if it's not the breaking down the tissue faster than it's building up, many times, and the reason why they're underweight to begin with, is their small intestines are filthy. As I've mentioned many times, the surface area of our large intestines is flat like my hand. Small intestines, little fingers, villi, absorbing all those nutrients. Well, stick your hand in a bucket of paint, stick your hand in some mud, pull it up, and your fingers are coated and now you can't absorb nutrients. That's why when you take a solid food vacation, you're paying attention to that adage, you don't put new wine in an old container. You gotta clean out that container so that when you put the new food in, you're able to absorb it. So a big issue with a lot of people is they're not absorbing uh, uh, what they consume. You might wanna take a spectrocell test and see what's actually in the cell itself. 
Don't look at what's in the blood. What is inside the cell? Are you absorbing your nutrients? There's a lot of things that can go wrong in this digestive process. You might not be producing any enzymes. That might be a problem. The water percentage, boy, that's a simple one, isn't it? A big problem we have is simply the small intestines are filthy. If you took the surface area of our small intestines, I've, I've heard for decades it covers the surface area of a tennis court. I read, I reread an article I read back in 13 where they say, no, it's two tennis courts. Well, imagine a tennis court, the area of a tennis court, that's a big area. Imagine if that was just covered with a little bit of dirt or dust, sand, sweep it up into a pile. And what do you have? An explanation why you see some people with these big bellies and skinny arms and legs. What's going on? Beer belly? No. Serpent, serpent, serpent. You got a serpent in their belly and you got to get rid of it. And that can keep you from absorbing nutrients. So the best way to gain weight is the best preparation for a better way of life all around. Solid food vacation on juices. And again, you have to understand seven components of weight. I didn't mention the seventh one. That would be the minerals. That's about 5% of, of our body. About five pounds, I should say. 4% of our body, about a man my size. Um, but you have to understand all those components of weight because a lot of times what you'll have with people who are thin, for example, we have what we call skinny fat. Well, you look at them and you think, well, they're nice and slender, aren't they? And then if you really looked at them, you'd realize, my God, there's no muscle around that bone. It's nothing but fat. Fat surrounds that muscle or that bone. There's no muscle at all. So you got to find out your body composition. You might be underweight and step on a scale and go, oh, my God, how can I be 30% fat? Well, again, you got to look at all those components of weight, don't you? So in your case, you got to put on some muscle. Again, most people are, have too much stuff that doesn't belong there, like waste matter in our colon and in our lymph system. And we uh, don't have enough of the good stuff like water. So, and, and muscle. So those are the things you have to understand. If you're wanting to gain weight, and you only want it to be healthy weight, right? Anyone can gain weight pretty much if you just gorge yourself. Even if you're not absorbing nutrients, you should still be able to put on the fat, I would think, and plug up your pipe. You should be able to put weight on that way. But that's not healthy weight. Again, most people have the wrong kind of weight. Too much fat, too much junk in the trunk, too much garbage in the limb system, and not enough of what they really need. A lot of water to be well hydrated so the body's functioning properly because water is used in almost every function in our body. And muscle mass. We need muscle mass. So how do you gain muscle on a raw vegan diet? Only one way. You've got to exercise. Just and eat plenty of food. You don't need any magic number of protein or anything. It's not that complicated. The only reason why athletes need more protein is because they also need more calories, and that's how they get their extra protein. It's a myth to think that athletes are some special type of person that needs extra protein. You do, and you'll get it as long as you eat enough calories to make up the difference of what you did. It's really simple. So if you're not gaining weight, Several places to look. If you're not running your numbers through a chronometer or someplace like that, you might not be getting enough calories. A big problem people have in the beginning is they don't understand how much they have to eat because fruits and vegetables don't have a whole lot of calories. On an average, they're about one-fifth amount of calories of what most people are eating when you look at the things that most people eat. So if you normally eat one plate full of food, you're going to have to have five platefuls of food. That's what's so great about this lifestyle. You get to eat a lot because you're getting a lot of water and a lot of fiber, and we need that. But in the beginning, that fiber is not going to do as good a job to clean out your intestines as nothing but juices. Because when you put nothing but juices in, all of our energy goes to getting rid of anything that might still be in there. This might be why you're not gaining weight. You don't put... New wine in an old container. You got to clean out your body. Make sure it can absorb the nutrients. If you're still having problems, then you might go to, to have your, your uh, do a, a spectra cell test done. That will measure what's actually getting absorbed in your, in your cells. And I, and I would do that as a last resort. I wouldn't start there unless I was having other health challenges and I had to make sure I knew right away if there's something else I need to tweak. Remember, we're damaged. <laughs> All individually different though. Some of us might not have uh, adrenals working very well. We might not be able to handle fruit. Our pancreas might not be working 
uh, our liver might not be working, we might not be uh, uh, putting out the enzymes we need to absorb these foods. So there's a time and a place to supplement if you need to. But that's not where I like to start. I like to start by removing the causes because many times people don't do that. They're still making a mistake somehow. And food's not a panacea. You still got to move your body. You still got to exercise. You got to get some of this beautiful sunshine out here. And it's good 91 degrees today. <laughs> November 4th here in Houston, Texas, 2017. Love it. I'm actually working up a sweat out here. I wish I could rip these damn things off. It's the only, time, only place on me I'm miserable right now because I'm sweating underneath here trying to get cool. And the body doesn't work when you got clothes on. <laughs> it does, or to cool, it doesn't work. Anyway, starting to, starting to digress a little bit. Um, let me think if there's anything else I would want to add to this. Um, I don't think there is. If, um, if you're not ready for a solid food vacation, keep in mind that sometimes you just got to lose a little bit before you gain it back. But if that doesn't happen, obviously you better look for something else. You're either not absorbing your nutrients, no enzymes, or you just got that serpent in your belly. That's keeping you from making the most out of your life. And I, and I know from experience, man, when you can get rid of that serpent in your belly, you're in for a treat.